Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar, how to have your candidate prospecting time on LinkedIn Recruiter and Recruiter Lite. This webinar is hosted by Giles Garnett, the Head of Professional Services, and live chat is monitored by Jim, me, the Head of Professional uh, Customer Service, actually. Um, we will have Q&A with Giles at the end of the webinar. And thank you so much for joining and let's start our webinar. Cool. Uh, hello and good morning and thank you. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to everyone, wherever you may be in the world. And uh, thanks for joining us in our latest series of free webinars. And uh, good to hear myself and Jen are going to be swapping jobs later today. Um, <laughs> sorry, Jen. Uh, for anyone who's new to Duck Soup and these webinars, my name is Giles and I'm Head of Professional Services here at Duck Soup. Um, and I've been presenting these uh, webinars for the last two or three years. It's coming up to nearly three years now. Um, Today, we're going to have a look at one of the LinkedIn platforms that's often forgotten by some users, but as from the start of uh, this year, uh, is once again supported by DuckSoup. There was a period where uh, there were some, some transitions going on within the LinkedIn platform, uh, and now at last we can safely say, uh, confidently say, that we are supporting the LinkedIn recruiter platform again. As always, Jin, our head of, head of customer support, uh, will be monitoring the live chat and answering as many of your questions as possible. So please do keep the uh, questions on topic and then they're useful for everybody. If you have other questions, you can always contact our support team via the live chat on our support pages or at info at ducks-soup.com. And before anyone asks, as usual, this session is being recorded and will be made available to you via the usual channels, be, the, be that the, uh, the website, the YouTube channel, and if you've registered, you'll get the recording um, in your mailbox in the coming days. So very quickly, for anybody who's new and arriving at a duck soup webinar for the first time and thinking, what's duck soup? I've heard of it, but I'm not doing anything, don't know much about it. It's a Chrome extension, compatible with some other browsers that you can use to mimic human behavior on the LinkedIn platform. Um, you basically select the list you want DuckSoup to process, and then you get DuckSoup to run your chosen activities against that list. And it's really important to remember, it's a human behavior, it's mimicking human behavior, it's a robot that, that mimics all those mouse clicks, and it keeps your LinkedIn account as safe as possible if you follow all our recommendations that we make in our blogs and all our, the, the, the advice we give online. So that's what DuckSoup is for anybody who's new. You can install it via the, the Chrome Web Store. Just go to the Chrome Web Store and, uh, and look up Duck Soup. Um, our homepage and our support web page there on the screen as well. Now, I believe that most of the people on the call today are probably likely to be well versed in how to use LinkedIn Recruiter, um, possibly more so than I am, perhaps. But uh, um, I have uh, I've been testing and uh, playing around in Recruiter for the last uh, week or so, but um, I'm not going to talk through how to carry out searches and how to filter to find the results you want. What I would like to focus on is how what you can do with a list of candidates once you have found them. Um, and when we and when we talk about the way that Duck Soup works, we need to think about or at least be aware of the difference between each of the LinkedIn platforms. Why would you be working in Recruiter? Well, there are some pretty obvious uh, numbers uh, to support why you'd be working in Recruiter. From, uh, from the LinkedIn pages themselves, you can see that six people are hired every minute on LinkedIn. There are more than 57 million companies on LinkedIn and more than 15 million job openings. Aligned with that, there's over 12 million LinkedIn members who are signaling their availability to work to, with that little hashtag and the, the frame, is it open to work? So it's a huge resource for both job hunters and job advertisers. So it's a fantastic resource for, for, for all of that. So, so bear that in mind and, and why you're using the platform. It, it is the place to go um, when, uh, when working in the recruitment space. So as I was just saying, you need to think about each of the LinkedIn platforms. So you've got the basic LinkedIn, which is, you can see my profile here on the right hand side, hopefully. Uh, that's my how what my profile looks like in in regular LinkedIn. Your Sales Navigator, which is what my profile looks like in Sales Navigator, and you've got the Recruiter view as well. Um, Duck Soup basically makes use of the available functionality to maximise your pro productivity. Beware aware of what you can do and where, because there are some limitations. And sometimes people are like, well, why can't I do that in regular LinkedIn? Because uh, it's just purely how LinkedIn have built their platform. So be aware of these differences. It's very, very important. 
So from a LinkedIn recruiter platform point of view, you can visit, you can auto visit, I should have put there, uh, profiles in recruiter using DuckSoup. And during that, DuckSoup will gather data. You can scan a list of profiles in recruiter and, and you will also then gather the regular LinkedIn URLs. You can visit and direct message. Oh, that's a, that's a bit of a typo. Never mind. You can direct message or uh, or in-mail uh, profiles in Recruiter. If you have DuckSoup Turbo, you can enrol profiles directly into a campaign in Recruiter. You can download your visit data, which you can do uh, on all the platforms. You cannot use Visit and Connect directly within Recruiter. I'll show you what you can do on the next slide. With DuckSoup Turbo and all of this data can also appear in your CRM. So that's a standard across the board there. So be aware of these different functionalities, the, the, what you can and what you can't do directly in Recruiter. And it just purely depends on what icons there are on the screen. Next slide's a little bit in depth and a bit more complicated, but uh, hopefully it's, uh, it's a step by step. So if you're in Recruiter and you want to visit and connect to candidates, you've got two options. If you've got Pro, and I'll walk through this, of course, in the demo. Uh, you can get a list of candidates on the screen. You scan the list. You download the scan. You have to play around a little bit with the columns in, in your, in your uh, CSV file and then use the revisit data tool to upload a file and you do visit and connect. Alternatively, if you've got DuckSoup Turbo, you get a list of candidates on the screen. You set up your campaign and then you enroll your candidates directly from Recruiter. So it's just really important to remember that when you visit a recruiter profile or a, yeah, someone's profile in recruiter, there is no connect button, unfortunately. Uh, you can only do that in either regular LinkedIn or Sales Navigator. These are the two options that you've got if you've got Pro and if you've got Turbo. Um, of course, if you've got Turbo, you can also take the Pro option, but uh, normally if you're using Turbo, you would be building campaigns and that's the most efficient way to work um, in that respect. A little bit of a bonus update, um, something that we were playing around with uh, previously uh, yesterday and today. Um, there's a job. There used to be a job seeker option in in LinkedIn. Um, doesn't seem to appear anymore, but it's still in the DuckSoup option. So what we've done is we've updated DuckSoup to identify the open to work frame. You know the little frame with the green uh, hashtag and the the, the frame around the uh, the uh, the profile picture. Currently, if you use the job seeker skipping option in regular LinkedIn you can make use of this feature. We will, in the very near future, update those skipping options to reflect what this does. But uh, it was something that we wanted to try and uh, see if we could get working quickly, uh, really as a little bonus uh, for today's webinar so that you can work. If I've got time, I will show you how that works as well. So I'm gonna do a walkthrough of what you can and can't do in Recruiter. We're gonna do some scanning, some visiting, messaging, enrolling, et cetera, how to download and revisit your data, et cetera, as well. So let's come out of here and let's go to LinkedIn, first of all. Now, first thing, as always, I say is, this is me on LinkedIn. If you haven't connected with me yet, feel free to connect with me um, on, uh, on LinkedIn. Um, this is me. Uh, put it in, the, in your connection request message that you've, uh, you've found me uh, via DuckSoup. I'm always happy to interact with users, very happy to share knowledge and experience with people as and when. Now I've got another profile open here as well, which is um, a recruiter um, uh, profile. So what I'd like to do here is first of all, show you the difference between the different, uh, how the different profiles look. So if I look at my profile here in recruiter, you can see here there is, as I was saying earlier, there is no option to connect. I can message, I can send a message to somebody. Now I'm through this, profile I'm connected with, with myself so I can message direct. But you can also here use the in-mail function as well if you want to. So be aware of the limitations of, you know, you are limited to what the mouse clicks look like. Just to show that you, in case you aren't familiar with these things, if I go to, this is how my profile looks in, in regular LinkedIn. And if I also then go to, to Sales Navigator and show you what, how a profile looks there. Uh, let's just go here. There we go. So this is what my profile looks like in Sales Navigator. Um, now, if I was looking at a profile here, I would be able to connect in Sales Navigator like I would also here in uh, in regular LinkedIn. So all of these different uh, things that you can click on, 
um, it's purely the, the, the LinkedIn fun sorry the duck soup fun functionality is purely based upon the LinkedIn platform and the options that are available to you on the screen. So let's go back to our uh, recruiter uh, page. So here we are, we've got recruiter open here. Um, now you could, oh, let's close that one, there we go. Uh, now of course you could you could carry out a search here, so we could just do, um, yeah, I don't know, um, let's do field uh, services, uh, oh, can't spell services, there we go. Field services engineer, you could just do a job title search here and come up with a list of candidates. Of course, you've got all of the other um, filters that are available to you, depending, of course, on what level of recruiter you've got, because there are, of course, some other, should we say, premium upgrades that you can take in order to look for open to work and more likely to respond, et cetera, et cetera. And you can go into the advanced uh, features there as well. This is just a recruiter light account, but there are, I understand, different levels where you can have different uh, information made available to you. What you can see here is uh, a list of people. Um, I've got 25 on a, on a search result here. And if I'm just, to, if I was just to open, just click on a profile, you see what comes up here. This is how a profile looks. Um, I have no option to connect here, so I can't connect to this person from within uh, Recruiter. However, if I've got Duck Soup Turbo and I've built my campaign, and hopefully these ter this terminology is not too foreign to, to all of you. So if I just go to my Ducks Dash a second here and I've got a, a drip campaign here. So you see here I've got, um, I was testing, I've got a connection request to follow up one and a follow up two. So that's my, my campaign there that I've built. Um, I'll just make sure that the robot is, uh, let's just turn that off a second because I don't want to send any messages at the moment. Uh, oh, sorry. Yep, yeah, okay, I've got the planner turned off, there we go. All right, so if I just go back here, what I can do if I've got Turbo, of course, is I can go up here and I could say, right, I'd like to enroll these people into my campaign. Of course, I'd, have a, I'd refine my list somewhat and I'd click on the enroll button here. And now I'm just going to batch enroll some people into a single campaign. I'll press the OK button there. And if we just leave it for a couple of seconds, it's going to now queue up a whole load of enrollment activities against those people there. Let's let that run a second and we should get the dialog box come up in the top right hand corner. Need this to run a second. Please talk amongst yourselves. There we go. Oh, oh it's because I've got the job seeker option on. There we go. Let's stop that. That's because I was playing with that one earlier. Let's try that again. Apologies. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, I've turned that option off. So let's try that again. Let's enroll my, my profiles. Charles testing, and now we'll try again. So now hopefully it will uh, will work correctly. Um, good to see that the job seeker option is working there insofar as uh, I'm not in regular LinkedIn. Um, so now we should do the same thing, and rather than coming up with the error, seamlessly it should now um, enroll all of these people that we are. So it's now enrolling these people into my options, following my skipping rules there as well. I'm going to stop the robot there. Uh, there we go. Uh, uh, so it's just enrolled 20 something people into my campaign uh, and I've stopped the uh, the robot. If I now go to my queued activity here in my Ducks Dash, I should now see a whole load of um, invitations queued up. And you can see here that dynamically Ducks Hoop has managed to identify the regular LinkedIn URL of these people and it's queuing up my invitation accordingly here. You see there, there's, there's my message that's queued up to go out. And they've all been enrolled into this trials testing uh, campaign. Now, I don't actually want to send any of those, so I'm actually going to click on there and remove them so I don't accidentally send out any spurious invites. So there you can see exactly how that would work using, um, uh, using um, what am I going to say? Yeah, using uh, DuckSoup Turbo. Now, if I've got DuckSoup Pro, I don't have the ability to be able to enroll people into a campaign. And I can't, unfortunately, use the visit and connect because there's no way to connect to people within um, within uh, LinkedIn Recruiter. So what I could do is I could visit all the profiles and gather their data and then create a CSV file from there. Um, but that would take quite a long time because I'd have to leave the robot to run and visit each and every single profile in turn. And of course, that would that would take quite a lot, uh, a lot more time. 
So what you can do as a little bit of a shortcut is you can go to this button here, the scan profiles button. Um, and if I press the scan profiles button there, what we'll see is that DuckSoup will very quickly gather some information about the, the profiles that are there on the screen. We'll just leave this to run a second. Yeah, it's now going to scroll down and capture the whole page, I hope. There we go. So it's just captured some data there. We'll stop the robot. Um, so I've just scanned a single page here. Um, and what DuckSoup does is it captures the data, some, some high level data that you see here on screen. But fortunately, what we're able to do is then we can go to this button here to download our data. And if I go to my, my scan data file here, that creates me a, that, that, that creates the CSV file. And what we'll see here is, now I think the first, the first few I'm going to delete because um, I think that was the, let's get rid of those because then we've got the clean data because we know that Anthony was at the top of the page. So there we go. So what we've got here then is we've got a, a series of different um, uh, columns with different data in. Now, you see here we've got in the profile here, we've got a, a URL. Now that's got this, 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 bit here which says talent so that means that that's actually um, their recruiter profile that means that that's their uh, their, their recruiter uh, LinkedIn recruiter profile which we talked about earlier here we've got the public profile so that's their regular LinkedIn URL and I think further on we maybe you have another one as well oh, no sometimes you have uh, oh there yeah there's, there's another column there that says it actually does actually say recruiter profile which is probably exactly the same as that column so we get that twice now in order to be able to carry out an activity against a profile, remember, we need the regular profile. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take this data here and I'm going to cut it out of here because we don't need the uh, the, the talent or the uh, recruit the recruiter um, URL. But what we need to do is make sure that we have, in order to make use of the DuckSoup revisit tool, which we'll come on to in a second, we need this data here, the the regular LinkedIn URL to exist in this column. This, this profile column is what DuckSoup looks for when we're doing our, uh, uh, our revisit. So I'm gonna take this, this column here, I'm gonna cut that out of there, and we're just gonna paste that over to there. That didn't do anything. Oh, I clicked on the wrong button, there we go. Uh, we're gonna cut that, uh, yeah. And we're gonna do that, there we go. So what I've done now is I've put all of the, the regular LinkedIn URLs here into this column that's called profile uh, we're going to save our, our file it's the, this one here it gets the timestamp as to when you've downloaded it so now i've got three columns the most three most important columns here the profile column the first name column and the, the last name column the others i can keep but i don't have to um, we'll save this file so that it's uh, captured all of that data and what i can do now is i've got my 25 uh, prospects here from my uh, from my project or from my uh, recruiter search We'll close that and then we're going to go to our, our duck soup icon here and down here we've got the revisit data button so click on there and now i can upload my file it's the latest scan data file there we go and what we've got here is now our list of people here let's go up here so we can see here's anthony and Doan and hein and beta if we look here anthony Doan, hein and beta we've now got all of their profiles here in a nice compatible format in, it, in order to be able to use their regular LinkedIn URL in order to say, yep, right now with DuckSoup, I would now like to visit and connect and probably include my custom connects message. That would be the way to do it using Pro. Um, so with Turbo, you would do the enrollment. With, um, uh, with Pro, you need to be able to do this. It's just unfortunate that, that when you uh, when you visit a profile in, in a Recruiter, you don't have that connect button and, and therefore you need to be able to make use of this. Uh, but it makes it much quicker um, if you can scan the data, grab the URL and then create your own, your own custom file. It really opens up the possibility to accelerate your recruitment activities and then your outreach. And remember, every time you visit a profile, so if we go back to this, this, uh, this list here, if we just... Uh, set the robot off to carry out some visits. Let's just turn everything off apart from, let's run it that speed. Do, 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 do. Um, where are we? We are Wednesday at five o'clock. There we go. So the robot will be active. It's, it's uh, gonna be able to do stuff and we'll make sure we're just, 
we go. Yeah, we're not going to send any messages. So just to show you the sort of data that you can get when you do visit a profile, I'm just going to ask DuckSoup to, to visit some profiles here. I'm not going to do anything else there. I'm just going to uh, do that a second. We're just going to set ro the robot off to auto visit some profiles here in Recruiter, just to show you what the robot looks like when it's in action. And what we can see now is that DuckSoup will reload the page. It's going to scroll down the page and uh, check for some data. And then it's going to start visiting from the top of the page. Um, there we are. So it's going to open the, the guy at the top of the page. You see that information uh, being gathered down there in the bottom right. If I was in-mailing him, it would now carry out the in-mail. If I was tagging him, it would tag him, et cetera, et cetera. It would carry out all of those usual activities that you see DuckSoup do. Um, and yeah, uh, this would be the very long-winded way of being able to gather information, um, just carrying out these auto visits. And what you'll see here as well is the little counter where it says 43 there. I can see that uh, it's going to gradually creep up as it visits more and more profiles. So the recruiter environment is very specific to, 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 to the recruitment business. Of course, it gives you those abilities to be able to create projects, et cetera. So, so these activities all work from a search or from a project point of view, depending on which view you're looking at your list of candidates. And you can use DuckSoup then to scan your lists, to gather data quickly, or indeed to auto visit people in order to gather more detailed information. We'll just stop the robot there because we've managed to visit a couple of profiles while I've been chatter, chatting away there. If we go to the download data button now and we look at our visit data for the profiles that we visited, you can then see the sort of information that DuckSoup is gathering for you here. So you see here again, you get um, the LinkedIn ID, you get the timestamp, of course, as to when you've carried it out. You get the regular LinkedIn URL, the recruiter URL, the picture URL, first, second or third degree connection, number of connections, when they, where they work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and other bits and pieces as well there, um, other bits of data that you're, you're, you're looking for. So all of this information can then, if you've got Turbo, you can have all of this information forwarded straight into your uh, into your CRM or the database of your choice. All of those options are, are available to you as well. Um, so think about how you're using Recruiter. Uh, let's go back here. So you know, if we go back to um, here under the project view, for example, um, a project here where you put people into a project list. So again, this list here, all you need to do is make sure that the icon has turned green, then you can carry out your activities on that page there you are, DuckSoup is at your service, so now I can carry out my activities, be that enroll, visit, or scan. All that information would be the same, uh, depending on where they, what, what view you looked at. Um, here in a, in a project view, of course, you can uh, do exactly the same as you can from a search perspective. So the, 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 the thing that people really need to remember is, yeah, you've got, you've got the recruiter platform, it is different to, to Sales Navigator, and to regular LinkedIn, um, but yeah, you have still have all these possibilities as well. Now, the other thing I would like to show you while we're on the call, hopefully, if I go here and I just do a quick search for um, open to work. So I'm now in regular LinkedIn, um, and if I do a, a quick search for people who are open to work, so we see here these people who've got this little frame around them that says open to work. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change my uh, my options here within here. I'm not going to carry out any activities and I'm not going to skip. I'm going to skip them if not a job seeker. That's what I'm going to do here. Um, and what we should see now is that um, it should skip the lady at the top of the list here and then it should visit the next one because they are identified as job seekers. So um, Let's just double check to make sure the plan is active. Where are we? We are Wednesday afternoon. There we go. Let's go in here. And now we're going to say to DuckSoup, yep, yeah, please go and uh, visit some profiles for me. And what DuckSoup should do is it should identify uh, those people with the uh, open to work frame that is there. Um, so this was something that we wanted to try and get out um, in advance of today's webinar. and. Uh, Luckily, we have, and it will get, it will be refined a little bit more with the uh, with the options in in the coming uh, in the coming days. So you are not a job seeker, not a job seeker. So now it's going to hopefully identify some people who are. 
there we are. So it's starting with Anastasia. Uh, so it's picked up that she's got the open to work frame. Um, there you go, you can see that on, on her profile there at the bottom right. We zoom in a little bit there. Um, and yeah, now DuckSoup will carry out its regular activity, whatever that may be that I've chosen to do. But that way you can actually then target, hopefully, the people who are truly advertising themselves, one of the 12 million people apparently on the LinkedIn platform who are who are flagging themselves as open to work. So uh, so hopefully that is a, uh, a useful little um, add-on for people uh, to be able to use um, going forward. I'll leave that running in the background in a second. So let's go back to here, because this I think is probably the most important slide. To visit and connect candidates, in Pro, you've got a, a several step process to go through. In Turbo, you can just simply enroll people into your chosen campaign. Um, just be aware of that uh, and be aware of this, that every, each platform within LinkedIn has its own functionality. Another example would be you can only, for example, endorse skills. Think about the Duck Soup option. You can only endorse skills in regular LinkedIn if you're already connected to somebody. Endorsement isn't available on Sales Navigator or in Recruiter. Um, and just to show you the option that I'm talking about there, if we go to here, uh, where is it? Uh, endorse here. So endorse skills of first degree connections. And what we try and do is we try and identify what's available in each platform here in the text. So in mail here can be used in Sales Navigator or Recruiter. So make sure you check the options there and make sure that you're fully versed with what you're trying to do in uh, in those environments uh, let's go back to our slideshow do, 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 do. we talked about that we've covered that and we've covered the open to work option um in two weeks time um and do start getting your questions into gin while i'm doing this um if you haven't already in two weeks time we've got a uh, friend of duck soup uh scott wright uh from amped marketing um, he's going to be joining us again. He did a webinar for us last autumn, I believe it was October time. Um, and he's going to be doing a follow up for us in two weeks time. Um, some really interesting stuff he's going to be sharing with us. We, two weeks ago, we had uh, Tyron, of course, who was, uh, as always, uh, very engaging. And uh, we've had some great feedback and some really positive uh uh, responses to that. Uh, Scott's going to be joining us in two weeks' time, and he's going to be taking his concept of, of messaging, etc., to the next level and talking about pivoting conversations uh, and really uh, showing you how to how you can really make the most of that. He's running an agency and he's handling um, in excess of 100 accounts now, and uh, is being proving very successful. Um, and is really uh, taking this to a next level. So uh, I think that's uh, one to really look forward to and get, get in your calendar if you can. Um, Scott, again, incredibly engaging, very um, enthusiastic and knowledgeable. Um, so I think that's well worth your time if you can make it. If you can't make it, of course, there's always the recordings. Um, but yeah, that's uh, something to look forward to um, for two weeks time. And I've just realized I've put the wrong date on there. That's dreadful, isn't it? Uh, that's the 13th of June, I believe. Um, yeah, uh, that's, that's the 13th of June. That's two weeks today. Um, booster and technical calls, as always, if you need help with setting up your, uh, your um, uh, solution or you need help with uh, familiarizing yourself with DuckSoup, uh, you can book those through our support team. And we'll move on to some questions. Jin. Uh, thank you for the webinar. Um, so I have one question. One user um, is very interested uh, to see uh, drip campaigns. Uh, would you be able to quickly show how to set it up or what oh, it looks like? Of course, of course. Thank so you. let's come out of it. Oh, I've left that running, haven't I? Let's, uh, let's turn that off a second. There we go. Um, right, so drip campaigns. Um, if you have DuckSoup Turbo, um, you have the option to build your own drip campaigns. And here within uh, within your DuckSoup options, I'll just show you how to get your options again. You click on the DuckSoup icon. And in the top right-hand corner, you've got options. Um, in the bottom right-hand corner, you've got the Ducks Dash. Now, if you go to your options here, um, and you've got Turbo, 
Then towards the bottom, you'll see here the automated follow-up messages. Now you can get to, to, to this is effectively where you need to uh, configure your campaigns. And what you can do here is if you click on the manage campaigns, that takes you to the ducks dash as well. So we'll click on manage campaigns. And what you have here is the ability to be able to, to build campaigns uh, depending on your audience. And in this case, so if we take this one here that I've uh, done before, um, this one here that I've uh, used webinar demo, what I have here is I've built a campaign which contains a connection request and then a series of follow-up messages which go out to the person after they have accepted my invitation. So enrolling somebody into a campaign, if they're a non-first degree connection, so if they're not they're a second or third degree connection, that would queue up the connection request. DuckSoup would then listen out for that for them to accept my connection request. And if they're as and when they um, accept, DuckSoup will then queue up all of these messages here to go out to them. And if I just change that to, to, to just for simplicity's sake. Um, so what would happen is at the moment that they accept, DuckSoup would look to see, okay, when do they accept? Okay, one one day after they've accepted, they're going to get that message. Four days after this message, so five days after they've connected, they'd then get this message. And then a week after that, so 12 days after they connected, they'd get this message. And then a further eight days on, they'd then get this message. So you can build a campaign of up to 12 messages in total, including a connection request. Um, and what DuckSoup does is it identifies who you're enrolling against which campaign, and then, yeah, um, queues up the appropriate messages to go to them. Um, as you can see here, I've got a number of different campaigns. You can build an unlimited number of campaigns. It's just more to manage. But then once you've built your campaigns, you can then through the funnel flow here, if I just go to the funnel flow, actually, I think I've already got it loaded here. There we go. Um, depending on which campaign it is that you're running or wanting to monitor, um, you can then see how successful or otherwise your campaign is. So you can see here that you've maybe enrolled a number of people, invited a number of people, how many have accepted, how many have received follow-ups, or how many follow-ups you've sent, and then most importantly, how many have responded. And the reason that's important is that um, you want to be able to, um, when they respond, you need to then make a decision as to whether you want them to continue to receive the automated follow-ups or whether you then need to um, manually communicate with them uh, on a one-to-one -one basis or maybe enroll them into a subsequent um, campaign. Um, by default, once they respond, DuckSoup doesn't send them any more automated follow-ups because that's your point at which to, uh, to interject. If I click on this block here where it says 57, we'll just wait for that to load. It just takes a couple of seconds. Hopefully any second now. There we go. So now here we can see the people who've responded. And what DuckSoup does, because it's listening out for people who are accepting your connection requests and their responses, you can then click on each of these blocks here and then hopefully, uh, then actually see, I'm not going to be able to find one now, I see what they've responded with. So you can see here that they've responded with that, they've accepted my invitation, and then they said thanks. And then then at this point, I would then need to make a decision, do I need, need to, to, to message him directly? I click on the LinkedIn um, icon there or reflow and allow him to continue to receive any automated follow-up messages. In order to get people into your um, campaigns, you've got a couple of different options. If I just reload this page a second here. Um, yeah, depending on which platform you're in, of course, uh, which we talked about just now, you have the option to um, bulk enroll people. So here I can enroll everybody into the same campaign by hitting the enroll profiles button here. I could also use the duck soup uh, widget here on the right hand side and then just choose which campaign I want to enroll each of these people into um, individually so you have that option there as well um, and yeah so you can run unlimited campaigns and you can have all those campaigns running in parallel as well just be aware of your daily limits um, be aware that when you're using the campaign feature and you're enrolling a lot of people into a campaign you probably want to make sure you're only sending out a certain number of connection requests per day um, in order to keep your account safe. You don't want to enroll, for example, a thousand people into a campaign and expect to, to uh, invite a thousand people in a day because that'll just end up uh, getting a, a pop-up from LinkedIn saying you're out of invites for now. Um, so that was a very long answer to a very short question. <laughs> but hopefully that was a good summary. Thank you very much. Um, last question. Um, if I want to connect my LinkedIn to a CRM, which CRM would you recommend? 
Oh, that's uh, that's the sixty-four million dollar question. That is, uh, which 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 I, I personally would not recommend any one CRM because every CRM is very different, and you need to have a a good uh, understanding of the data and, and, and what you want to use in there. The ones that I have experience of um, are uh, Pipe Drive, um, HubSpot, uh, Salesforce, Zoho and sharp spring um now yeah most of them are similarly priced i think sharp spring is a little more expensive um but most of the rest of them are fairly similarly priced and to be honest functionality wise i don't see a huge difference it's just really down to the preference of the user interface i'm probably most familiar having played around with them uh with pipe drive and with zoho um, or having said that, I did quite a lot with Salesforce as well a while ago. Um, of course, DuckSoup, we have a direct integration with, um, uh, we have direct integrations with both, uh, let's go here, oh, that's load, any second now. Um, we have direct integrations with HubSpot and PipeDrive. For some reason that's not responding, let's try it there. There we go, so we get, you can directly integrate uh, with uh, your, your, your LinkedIn account using DuckSoup with both HubSpot and PipeDrive. We will be introducing further integrations later in the year, um, but you can also, um, and we have done as well, we've built uh, integrations for people um, using webhooks uh, for both Zoho and for Salesforce and many others as well. And I can't think of too many others off the top of my head right now, but I know I've dealt with some other CRMs using um, Zapier and Make. Uh, so yeah, um, personally, I have probably most experience with with Zoho, Salesforce, but particularly PipeDrive. I'm most familiar with them, um, and it's just purely down to yeah your 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 budget and your uh, your preference with regards to the user interface. I would imagine. Thank you. No more questions from me. Cool. Quick reminder then. In two weeks' time, not on the 3rd of June, on the 13th of June, I believe it is, um, Scott <laughs> from Amped, um, yes, doing everything slightly, uh, slightly rushed. But um, quick reminder, you install DuckSoup via the Chrome Web Store. If you're installing it for the first time, you get a free 14-day trial. Um, so, yeah, uh, log on with your, with your Chrome account and uh, make use of that and have a proper play around with it. Our resources are there. And um, that's everything from me. I will be on the call in two weeks' time as well. Thank Over you, everyone, you. for joining uh, us today. And uh, hopefully we will see you again uh, during our next webinars. Bye-bye.